It's me, Margaret, and I have successfully motorized my Addy with a sewing machine motor, but I can easily put it back into the manual operation mode at any time. So I'm going to show you how I accomplish that. Keep in mind, though, that what worked for me is going to vary with for what works with you. For example, my goal was to not change my Addy in any major way. For instance, I didn't want to take it apart too much and alter any, I just didn't want to alter it in any way, to be honest with you. But I did have to make a few small changes. And what I had to work with was an old sewing machine that I already owned. Of course, we heard that you can buy some uh, an old sewing machine motor as is, or you can buy just an old sewing machine. Just look on eBay or um, Craigslist or anything like that to see if you can get your hands on that if you don't have one. This idea came to me from Sue Wright, who posted that she had done this on the Addie King Loomers and Knits Facebook group, which is probably your best resource at this point in time for Addie information. And I'll put the link in the description box below for you to find that. Sue had different materials than I did, and she did not go into great detail. But of course, when you use different materials or have, you know, whatever, it's going to be unique for everybody how they set theirs up. So I'm just going to share with you what I had, what I used, what, how I made it work. So let me show you. This is my sewing machine I got. Gosh, I think I was a senior in high school. So, let's see what it looks like. Been in the attic for ages, which is why it's yellow. It used to be ivory. <laughs> yeah, it used to be that color. So after it was all said and done, here it is. I did take it apart. This is this power switch. I cut off the light that, you know, your sewing machine light, where it was all powered through this motor. Now you may laugh at how simple this is, but here's the deal. Here's the sewing machine motor. I have a clamp to clamp it onto the edge of the table. And then I used the, I ended up using the original belt that came with my sewing machine, the one that was actually on the sewing machine. And the reason why is because, let's see if you can see down in there, the little turning mechanism, and keep in mind that I know nothing about machines. I don't know if you can see that, but it has little grooves that each one of these things fits into. And when I first began this process, I didn't have the rubber bands on here and the belt would slip on the slick plastic. So I first added rubber bands here, the yellow, and that was giving me friction, but it wouldn't stay put. So right here is an added rubber band that I put around two times and it's okay if it twists. So I had to get it really tight. I didn't want this one to twist, the yellow to twist. But this one, I wanted it to be really tight because it kept, it now keeps the yellow one from inching over, which was a very frustrating problem that I had when I first set this up. Now you'll notice that I took this part off of the handle. There's another wheel right here. And the reason I had to do that is because it would bump into my motor because this belt, the original belt that came on the sewing machine was not long enough. My first choice was not to have to take that off. I wanted to leave it on so that at any time I could just remove this and boom, I'd be back in business with manual operation. But what I did was to try to find a longer belt. So I went to the store, went to Walmart, and I found a vacuum cleaner belt. It was too wide, so I had to trim it down, and that's what I did. But it's just without the grooves I just did I could not get enough friction on it and so it kept slipping it was very frustrating so that didn't work and that's why I went back to my original one now I even took this this was the part 
on the sewing machine that that the belt would would be attached to and I even considered a way to put that on but it just wouldn't fit this is too small to go in there so it would, it would have taken some really major alterations to make this work so I like my solution better now here is that work table that I got from Harbor Freight. I got this idea from Susie who runs the Addie King Loomers and Knits group because your work can go down between there. Now the way I had to set things up, it's not actually centered. Do you see where the hole is over here? So when I made that scarf, it worked just fine. It did drop down over there, but it, you know, it had a little bit more friction because it was not, you know, directly down there. Now here is something that I wanted to do. I, had, I wanted to keep my pieces and parts close by and easily accessible so that I could put it back and be in manual operation within seconds. So what I did was a Ziploc, I taped a Ziploc bag to the bottom of this and it has the screw, the handle, and I even have a teeny little screwdriver here so that I can quickly reattach right here when I'm ready to go into manual mode. Now, why would I want to go into manual mode? Because not all yarn would be suitable for this. And remember, all our Addies are different. Susie of Addie King Loomers and Knits group once said, the Addies, each of our Addies kind of has little personalities. And where one type of yarn works great on my Addie, another, that same yarn would not necessarily work well for someone else on their Addie. It's the strangest thing, I promise. We can't figure it out. So, what I suggest is if you do motorize your machine, you only use yarn that is, uh, th that your Addie loves. That because it's going, I mean, you, d you don't necessarily need to go like at light speed you can go pretty slowly if you want to but you, you're still going faster than you would in manual mode so there's no ability to stop and check each stitch and you just don't have as much control so be sure that you choose a yarn that your addy loves so that you won't be having any headaches and you know messed up problems oh and make sure that you pull a whole lot free what i do is i'll just reach in and pull out a chunk in the middle and drop it on the floor use that up pull out another chunk and drop it on the floor until finally the skein gets loose enough to you know easily feed of course you could use a ball winder and have sit or pull balls and that would probably be uh, free enough to use on this i don't know i haven't tried that yet but i should think that that would work on there now another thing that i noticed is that my adding i mean my, my uh, motor gets hot which tells me and remember i'm not that mechanically inclined so i'm pretty sure that this little boater is maybe not strong enough for the task at hand so i will not sit there i'm kind of chicken so i'm not going to sit there for hours at a time doing this i'll do like one project and then i'll stop and let it cool down <laughs> and i'll do another project later and stop and let it cool down but i i think it works great if ever this motor does burn out or whatever give out on me then um i'll probably order another one <laughs> i'll probably find another one and do the same thing because now it, it's it's great i can knock out projects faster and i don't have to wear my arm out <laughs> with that repetitive motion like that. So um, it's two thumbs up as far as I'm concerned. Let me show you how it works for me. Okay, I can still easily access this for casting on. So you would just cast on with manual like this. And while it does turn here, it's not hurting anything. So you cast on as you normally would. And your sewing machine motor may have a belt that's long enough so that you don't have to take off that little outside wheel. Now I'm using Red Heart and remember that textures and performance vary by color too as well. I guess it has something to do with the dyeing process. 
Now with mine, I have an on and off switch that is still attached, so I have to turn it on. But you know, even getting it started, I like to do with the manual crank. And then I'm ready to go. Now I don't use any tension for this. Now I have found too with my little motor that even though I'm applying even pressure on my foot pedal, it will slow down at times. And I don't know if that's because I have different um, tension at certain point or what. All right, that's, that's kind of me being not quite as even. So I think the performance that you're going to get would be on uh, related to your motor as well. So when I said it gets hot, it does get, it gets warm. I, I wouldn't say it gets so hot that it alarms me, but I'm just a big chicken, so I will always let it rest in between projects. So, um, but there you have it. Works like a charm for me. Put any questions or comments below and I'll do my best to answer it based on my knowledge of, my limited knowledge of what I've done here. Good luck. <laughs>